Hey everyone, welcome back to Rolo Gaming. As you can see, I finally got a blue Yeti. So I hope my audio sounds better. Hopefully. Along with that, I finally fixed the aspect ratio of my webcam. Before it was some kind of like weird square thing. And um, now it's a rectangle. So yeah, I wish I could make it into a hexagon. My Civ fans know what's up. Oh, and along with that, I should also mention that um, someone created a Discord for the Rolo Gaming show. The Rollo Gaming YouTube channel. So the link for that is going to be in the description or I'll put it down here. And, you know, we already have like maybe five or six members. So go ahead and join. Absolutely going well. I love my community and it seems like um, you guys are all great. Which is really surprising. <laughs> but I'm really happy about it. Alright, so let's go ahead and see what we're going to be doing today. Today we're going to be talking about the Civilization VI game update for August. So let's go ahead and just watch this together and then we'll go ahead and do a deep dive and figure out what's going on. Hello Civ fans! Hello Civ fans! Welcome to our developer video for our free August game update. Today we're going to be providing an overview of the free content and new changes coming soon to Sid Meier's Civilization VI. With the Maya and Grand Columbia pack, we added some very, truly unique wonders to the game. Like similar wonders back in Civilization V, we know that they're not for everybody. Especially if you're playing something in multiplayer, you might want to have a more carefully controlled balance. So with that in mind, we've given you more control during the game setup phase with the Natural Wonder Picker. Civilization VI has over 30 wonders that could randomly- I wonder what the best wonder is. I'm sure you guys will tell me. Leave something in the comments. Tell me what the best natural wonder is. ...randomly appear in a map. And we bet that some people haven't seen them all. Or maybe you have some favorite wonders you want to try and see more of. Maybe you have some unfavorite wonders you'd like to see less of. Or maybe you have a cold, cold heart and want to remove all wonders from your game. Oh my god, look at the bags underneath his eyes. What it's like being a developer, guys. Yikes. And want to remove all wonders from your games. Natural wonders would still be random, but certain wonders would be excluded or included in your playthrough. This doesn't mean you can determine exactly when and where a certain wonder will appear. Like This will definitely help out in achievement hunting. I'm sure that there's some achievements with um, natural wonders, so this way you'll be able to find them way easier. Or just in general, if there's like a natural wonder you really like, then you can go ahead and check it out. Like some soothsayer calling down fire from the heavens. Also, don't worry, this list won't affect world builder maps. This month, we're also introducing a new mode for free called the Tech and Civic Shuffle Mode. Another game mode for us, boys. Discover a map's natural wonders, continents, and other surprises is one of the most exciting aspects of a game of civilization. Tech and Civic Shuffle Mode extend that sense of exploration as you journey through tech and civics trees. That's going to be really interesting and something that I want to do myself just because I really like, um, I really like the whole discovering thing, the discovering factor of Civilization VI. Harkening back to when I played my very first 4X game, one of my friends, he used to play it, and the mode he played with was called Blind Research, which meant that he couldn't exactly know what his next technology was going to be. So this made it easier, because you didn't have to plan ahead as much, but also you couldn't plan ahead as much. So I always thought that this was a... Did you guys see how many cuts happened there? Oh, don't look at me. I'm not gonna cut this here. And uh, I have no idea how I got over here. Or, or over here. Oh my God. The beauty of cutting, boys. I should just not cut. A really cool idea. And so I wanted to reintroduce it in Civilization VI for everyone. Implementing the randomization of the tech and civics trees was an adventure as we'd experimented with it during the last era of our Gathering Storm expansion. Does that mean that we can get giant death robots and uranium within the first uh, turns of the game? Civic Shuffle Mode will hide the identities and positions of each tech and civic. This is also going to add a lot to the replayability of Civilization VI, so I'm glad they added this in. What won't change is the unlockable for the research. Mining will always unlock mine improvements. The randomized tree will be the same for all players in that game. So the playing field stays level, but with some unexpected surprises along the way. And this is a mode that's free for everybody, even if you don't own Gathering Storm, even if you don't own Rise and Fall, even if you don't own the new Frontier Pass. Yeah, how much money did I spend on that? Oh my god. All those DLCs all together cost like hundreds of dollars. Actually, maybe like 150 probably. I'm also Canadian, so <gasps> me, right? Everybody. Each update will include changes based on feedback that you have given us online. You know what feedback you need to take? The bugs. Fix the bugs, please. All the bugs on Switch, all the consoles, and even on PC. Like, I tried playing an Ethiopia game and just to like explore it, and um, my game died. 
uh, it just crashed and then I had to like restart my computer. Thanks, civilization. This update, we've made some bounce changes and tweaks in Gathering Storm. Forests and jungle fires will tend to burn longer, so they will eventually be in a burnt out state and won't cause endless fires to continue to occur. I remember in like one of our games, the Congo was literally on fire like the entire time. We also have some great new tweaks to government plaza effects. You can find more details in the full list of patch notes when the update goes live. So that's the free content and changes coming your way in the August game update. Civ fans, you are the best fans in gaming. We so appreciate the chance to read all the conversations, stories, and feedback. Keep them coming, follow us on social, and have fun taking one more turn. Now that was good editing. All right, here, check it out. One more turn, 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 turn. Okay, that was the uh, update for August 2020. I wonder if the full details have been released yet. I mean, it's still August 17, and it's only been a couple hours, so I doubt it. But let me take a look. Okay, so it's coming out on August 27th. So we have a little bit until the actual update comes out. Expect another video like this and we'll go ahead and look at all the little details. I just noticed for the content roadmap for the new Frontier Pass, we're not getting something until September. I thought we were gonna get something in August, but now I can see that like it's every other two months, right? It's like every other month along with free updates uh, for all players. All right, so let's go ahead and go through this again. And this time we'll do like a deep in-depth uh, review and just analysis of what's going on in the new update. So pretty much what I can see, it's talking about the wonders and the tech and civic randomizer, which I mean tech and civic randomization is really going to be helpful for, you know, players who want to play the game and again and again and again, right? It'll add a bit of like strategy to each game that you play because I know in the beginning you know exactly where to go like I know exactly to go straight for philosophy when I'm doing civics or to go straight for religion whenever you're playing as Ethiopia trying to get the uh, religious district or the science district but this civic and tech update is really gonna like um, challenge some players I think too many players have gotten used to knowing exactly what's gonna come up in terms of the research in terms of what's coming up for the civics and so on so they know exactly what to research maybe this way it'll add a little bit of flexibility for people's strategy maybe you were looking for uranium but instead you got flight you're gonna have to change your strategy to you know work with what you have how long will it take you to get uranium again who knows you're gonna have to strategize with what you've got with that being said let's go ahead and take another look at this Hello Civ fans! Hello Civ fans! I'm never gonna get tired of that. That should be a meme. Especially if you're playing something in multiplayer, you might want to have a more carefully controlled balance. So with that in mind, we've given you more control during the game setup phase. Oh, you know what? That will actually help. You know what? That actually would really help. If you have like a Civ versus Civ video, you know, like an AI video that I do, then you can pretty much take out all wonders and make it more balanced like that. So you can make it so that one Civ isn't next to like all natural wonders, like the best natural wonders. Instead, neither of them will get natural wonders in order to grow. Civilization VI has over 30 wonders that could randomly appear in a map. And we bet that some people haven't seen them all. Have you guys seen all the natural wonders? I think the amount of Civ I've played, I've probably seen most of them by now. But I don't know if I've seen all 30 though. And I wonder if you can get like a big enough map to be able to have all the natural wonders in it. I doubt it. I think that'd be too big. I think they've got to like limit the amount of like uh, natural wonders that show up depending on the map size. But wouldn't it be cool if you literally just had like a map of just natural wonders everywhere? All 30 natural wonders in one Civ map. Someone make that. Someone make it and I'll take a look at it. Or maybe you have a cold, cold heart and want to remove all wonders from your game. I think I have a cold, cold heart. This doesn't mean you can determine exactly when and where a certain wonder will appear. Like some soothsayer calling down fire from the heavens. That's me. I'm the soothsayer that calls down all the comets to come down in our games. Pretty much in all the AI only games, it's like I'm the soothsayer saying, God! Bring down the heavens and attack the civilizations. Tech and civic shuffle mode extend that sense of exploration as you journey through tech and civics trees. 
Again, I think this is going to be really cool for replayability. For those people that are looking to mix up their strategies, I think this will be perfect for them. Like, look at this technology tree right here. If you went down, like, rifling, but you wanted industrialization, but you haven't done printing yet, you're going to have a tough time either way. And it's really going to force you to take a look at the map again. So I think this is huge for replayability. What do you guys think of the Civ Tech tree kind of like shuffling? Do you guys like it? Do you think it would help out? Do you think that it would be very replayable like this? Don't forget to write your thoughts in the comments, you guys. Tech and Civic Shuffle Mode will hide the identities and positions of each Tech and Civic, as well as randomize their prerequisites and costs. Wait, what if you do animal husbandry and then you get iron working because of that? Oh my god, that'd be so dumb. But that'd also be kind of funny, you know what I mean? <laughs> each update will include changes based on feedback that you have given us online. I hope a lot of it is bug fixes because I know that in our previous video so many people are complaining about it and I'm on the uh, Facebook page for Civilization 6 and they always talk about it too. It's like, hey, I have a bug in this. But yeah, definitely on August 27th, expect another video coming out then. I'll talk about the whole details from like bottom to top. Top, top to bottom. Yes. Genius. We also have some great new tweaks to government plaza effects. Who builds government plazas? I don't. I don't think I've ever built like a government plaza. We so appreciate the chance to read all the conversations, stories, and feedback. All right, let's go ahead and check it out. What are the comments on this video like? Please enable forest fires and comet showers for standard games again. After the last patch, they're now exclusively to apocalypse mode. As they should be, you gotta pay that money, boy. We paid good money for that. We paid like $50 for it. Oh, the Wonder Picker is something I've wanted for a while, but also wanted a City States Picker. Oh, that'd be nice! If you could pick your City States, you could probably maximize your strategy. If you had just Production City States, you could expand your production by a lot. If you just had Science City States, and you were going for a Science Victory, oh yes please! In fact, you can probably do that now with the Natural Wonder. If you're going for like a faith victory, then go for, I don't know, Mount Everest or something. I think Mount Everest gives you some bonuses towards faith. I don't really know. You guys know a lot more than me in terms of exactly what natural wonder is good for. But you guys understand what I mean. You could definitely pick and choose the wonder that's going to help you the most with your strategy that you're going to use. But if you have the civic tree and tech tree on shuffle, that might actually uh, ruin your strategy. So make sure whatever game mode you're doing on, you're doing it on a game mode that's highly controlled. So I can see some I rarely find or improve games that are themed around a victory type. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Rest in peace, Cliffs of Dover 2016 to 2020. Do Civ fans hate Cliffs of Dover? You guys let me know if you guys hate the Cliffs of Dover. Yes, the civics and technology shuffle mode means we can no longer follow the same rigid trees. Yes, definitely. This guy understands what it means to like replay a game many, many times. I know some of you guys probably have like hundreds of hours in Civilization 6. And I'm sure that the same tech trees and the same civic trees probably get boring or predictable at some point. I know whenever I play, I know exactly what's coming in terms of the uh, tech tree and the civic tree. So my strategies never really change. This is going to put me like on a back foot. Every time I pick like a new uh, research and get that researched, I don't know what's coming next. So I have to make sure that I'm prepared. I can't wait to turn off Cliffs of Dover. Oh geez, I guess everyone really hates the Cliffs of Dover. Okay, well that's everything. Before we go, let me go ahead and quickly show you the uh, Discord for the Rolo Gaming Show. In case if you guys are interested in joining it. Okay, so this is the Discord for the Rolo Gaming Show. So it's just Rolo Gaming Official. And as you can see on my right here, we currently have 6 members. Let's go ahead and bump that up to 10. Alright, that's everything from me guys. I hope you guys liked the video and don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye bye. Bye bye.